So now we move on to Galatians chapter 2. Now in Galatians chapter 2, if you look at the screen, uh, there are again just a few main sections, three namely. Number one, uh, in Galatians chapter 2, Paul accepted by the apostles, which I gave you a hint earlier when, when I spoke about uh, Paul meeting with the apostles in Jerusalem. Uh, and he was accepted by the apostles. The apostles did not reject him. Verse 1 to 10. Then the second part of this chapter 2 is Paul corrected Peter. Eh? Something wrong now. Paul uh, corrected Peter. You read some Bible, they say Paul rebuked Peter. Wow, so serious. Uh. You know who is Peter? No? Peter is the leading apostle. No? Anyway, we will see. Verse 11 to verse 14. And then the last part of this chapter 2 is justification by faith. Verses 15 to 21. So let's look at verse 1. In, uh, in this uh, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Then, after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. So after 14 years, just now you saw the map, right? He went from Jerusalem, he went to Damascus, Damascus, he went Arabia, Arabia, he went back to uh, Damascus, and then Damascus, then he went down to Jerusalem, stay 15 days with Peter, and then after that, he went up back to Cilicia and, and, and Syria. Okay. Now your geography has improved, right? And then he went back home to wait, uh, wait until Barnabas came along. You go and read Acts 11. He came along and said, hey, Paul, stop resting here. Come with me. Antioch needs your help. So they went to Antioch and he spent one, they both spent one year teaching the people in Antioch. And they grew. But there was still something disturbing. And that was because there were the Judaizers. Remember? The Judaizers who were always there to undermine Paul's ministry. And to them, Christ is not enough. Christ is not enough. Uh, Christ plus the law. Example, you must be circumcised. You, you must eat uh, a kosher food. Kosher, that means uh, no pork, lah, no pork lah, if I can put it simply. Okay? It is a diet that God gave to the Jewish people. And so I want to put them into that again. So, this is at a big issue. For Paul, is, he knew after so many, and he's not a new Christian, right? You know by now, he's not a new Christian. After 14 years, that means after 14 years of him being saved. So he has been a Christian for 14 years and he has been studying and meditating and he had private tuition from the Lord and he's, he's probably, knowing Paul, he would not have been resting on his laurels. Even in Tarsus and other places and in Antioch, he was teaching. He was teaching the truth and the word of God. And he was very certain that by grace, he has been saved. Not by the works of the law. So, he could not uh, just let this by. So he and Barnabas, they went to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles in Jeruz Jerusalem to settle this. But at the same time, they were also bringing financial aid. If you remember, we studied Second Corinthians, right? He went, he wrote Second Corinthians and, and so on. Uh, and you find that even in that and in other churches that he went, he went to enlist their help, financial help, for the Christians in Judea, Christians in Jerusalem who were suffering because of what? Famine. They were poor. So they have blessed you spiritually by giving you and passing to you, conveying to you the good news. Now, materially, they are suffering. So can you help them? So they brought these material blessings even to Jerusalem. So, with that in mind, so the first, his first visit after he became a believer was when he spent 15 days in Jerusalem with Peter, right? Then he went back to Cilicia, his hometown. 
Now, after 14 years, after 14 years of him being saved, and, and Paul, no, Barnabas went to take him out to Antioch, and then from Antioch, come down. So now he is going to Jerusalem. It will be the second time that he will be going to Jerusalem after he was saved. You follow me? So that's why we see the word again. So then, after 14 years, I, I, Paul, right, went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. You know, there's, there's so much I can talk about even in this one verse. So, see ya. 14 years ago, went to Jerusalem. Okay? Then break. Now, 14 years later, then come to Jerusalem. But do you know that every male Jew must go to Jerusalem three times a year, compulsory, under the law, to celebrate three feasts. They're all together seven feasts a year, but three feasts, they have to go to Jerusalem. Right? One is the Passover, then the Pentecost, and then the Tabernacle. They must go to Jerusalem. If you are a male Jew, eh, Paul, uh, supposedly to, the more, to be a, a radical, to be a zealous Jew and Pharisee of Pharisee, Hebrew of Hebrew, he should have gone. Uh. But you know, 14 years he didn't go to Jerusalem. He pontang. You know why? Because the law set him, no, grace set him free from the law. He is no longer bound by the law. You follow me now? I am free. I am free. I am no longer under the law. So, for 14 years, he did not go. So, he missed all these fees. And now, he went with Barnabas. And Barnabas was the encourager, a fellow Jew. And he took also, and he also took Titus with me, with him. So, and also took Titus with me. So, who is Titus? Titus was one of his beloved disciples. There was Timothy and there was also Titus. So Timothy was sent to, to certain churches to, to help Paul oversee, like for example, Ephesus and so on. And Titus was sent to other places. But they, they were beloved disciples, spiritual sons of Paul. Timothy... Timothy was a Jew. His mother was a Jew, but Timothy's father was a Greek. But in the Jewish tradition, if your mother is a Jew, you're a Jew. So, Paul, when he took Timothy with him in the mission trips, before that, he had Timothy to be circumcised. But when he took Titus, Titus was a Gentile. Titus wasn't a Jew. And he did not get Titus circumcised. Then you say, wow, why the difference? Huh? Why, you know, Timothy circumcised, Titus did not? Because Timothy was a Jew. And to go and minister, and to go and minister to the Jews, huh? and if this issue surfaced up, ah, why Timothy, a Jew, why not circumcised? You know, even before you start off the, 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 the block, you already stop. You cannot even open your mouth because you, know, you will not be, because if you are a strict Jew, you will know. As I, I preached that Sunday, uh, chapter, which chapter was it? Joshua. And I showed to you, under the Abrahamic covenant and so on, must be circumcised. If you are not circumcised, you, you got nothing. You, you'll be ostracized. So, if you go to the Jews and want to witness to them, before you even get going, that they will see Timothy not circumcised is already a stumbling block. It's an obstacle. You cannot go any further. So, in order to overcome all this, Timothy gets circumcised so a lot more doors will be opened for us to minister to the Jews, to bring the gospel to them. Well, for Titus, this was a very smart move by Paul to bring Titus, a disciple, a, a Greek, a Gentile, bring him to Jerusalem and see if the 
Christians in Jerusalem, see if the apostles in Jerusalem will force Titus to be circumcised. The long and short of this is nobody, nobody forced Titus to be circumcised. That means they all agree on this, that you, have, you are now free from the law. But it is not these people who were giving the problem, not the Christians in Jerusalem who were giving the problem to Paul, but the Judaizers. The Judaizers, supposedly Christians, they profess to be Christians, but they want to hold on to the Jewish tradition. And they go around insisting, causing a lot of confusion, even amongst the churches up in Antioch and so on. And that's why Paul and Barnabas came to Jerusalem to want to settle the issue. And they brought Titus. And if they brought Titus to Jerusalem, and the apostles in Jerusalem, and the Christians in Jerusalem, all these Jewish Christians, hey, Titus, before you even step into this place, uh, before you open your mouth, I want you to be circumcised. That means they insist that a Gentile be circumcised before they can become Christian. Then you know, the people in Jerusalem are different on doctrinal basis from what Paul had been teaching. But praise be to God when he went there. No, nobody insisted that Titus be circumcised. That means you and I are preaching the same gospel. You follow me? Okay, so I took a bit long to explain this to you, but otherwise you read this, you can get a bit caught. So, verse 2. Verse 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. The thing about Paul, uh, okay, I can't say England champion, uh, but he's Greek, very champion. Sometimes his sentences are not short. It's, they are very long. So I must break it so it's easier to, for you to comprehend. So verse 2, the first part. And I went up by revelation. Revelation is something which was not known, but made known. But in this case, this word here, revelation, as we read earlier, revelation from God, not from men. So he wasn't summoned by men. He wasn't summoned by the apostles uh, in Jerusalem. This is the HQ, you know, the church. Initially, of course, the, the, the church HQ was in Jerusalem. But later, later, the HQ sort of shifted to Antioch because it is from there that the mission went to the rest of the world. He wasn't summoned. Paul wasn't summoned by the apostles in Jerusalem to report to Jerusalem. But it was God who directed him to go to Jerusalem. That's what it means. And I went up, went up where? To Jerusalem. Okay? I went up to Jerusalem because God told me to by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Basically, he went to Jerusalem and told them, no, this is the story uh, I've been teaching and telling the people up in the Antioch church and elsewhere. This is the story. Then the apostles in Jerusalem said, hey, we're also telling the same story. Uh. But we never compare notes before. I never exchanged. So he wasn't sharing with them Oh, let's see what you share. I share. Oh, no. He was preaching to them, and then they find that hey, whatever his story or whatever good news he was sharing is the same as what we are. So if yours and mine are the same, and we did not exchange notes, then where could it come from? You got it from God, then where did he get from? Must be from God. Lah. That's what it means. So, and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately. So the first part of this, if you look at the notes just now, it's a private consultation, verse 1 and 2. Private consultation. Because he also exercised wisdom. Why? Because first of all, we read earlier, the last part of chapter 1, a lot of churches in Judea, they do not know 
who is this guy Paul? No? All they know is he was a persecutor. Maybe he is a wolf in sheepskin. No? So he did not want to make a big... So privately, he went to those people with some reputation. What does it mean? But privately to those who were of reputation, it means uh, he went to the church leaders. These are the church leaders who are established at that point in time. So they are known in the community. So he did not straight away have an open crusade. He just went to have a private meeting with the church leaders. And you will know, this would be like Peter, James, John. So, but privately, to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or have run in vain. Means what? The worst thing is, he comes to Jerusalem and he shared with the people in Jerusalem. They say, hey, different, eh? Different. No, no, no. In Jerusalem, we say you, you must be circumcised and then you can become Christian. No. But Paul would say, then I wasted my time because I've been going around the whole world telling them that you don't need to be circumcised. You are free. Grace. And grace alone. Not grace plus something else. Not grace plus law. Christ is enough. You follow me? So, he said, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. So, it's either Peter you and your team in Jerusalem are wrong or I am wrong. But of course, knowing Paul, knowing Paul, he's such a learned guy and he's quite a, a strong guy, character-wise. He wouldn't think he's wrong. He would believe that he is right because he had this revelation from God, from Jesus himself. But praise be to God, he did not run in vain because the apostles in Jerusalem agreed with him. Whatever you have been sharing, the good news, is the same as what we've been sharing. It is that of Jesus Christ. So that was a private consultation. Next, we look at a practical illustration. A practical. So back to Titus. Instead of trying to, to, to give a lot of uh, arguments and debate with you, hey, I just bring Titus. Ah. I just bring Titus. See what you will do to him, what you will say to him. And I know what is on your mind. It's a very simple test. So, verse 3. Verse 3. Yet, not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Shall I read this again? Not even Titus, no. Titus, a Greek, not a, not, not a Jew, huh? He came with me and he went to Jerusalem to meet you guys. He was not compelled. But if you want to be voluntarily, by all means. But he wasn't, he wasn't compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth. Means secretly. To spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. So all these problems that we are having uh, is because of this bunch of fellows called Judaizers. No? They came in secretly uh, and want to bring Christians back into bondage again. But it is not true. It is not true. Paul found it with his life example. He brought Titus. But they did not compel Titus to be circumcised. So you want to know, again, to refresh your mind uh, how terrible the Judaizers were. So you look at uh, uh, Acts 15 verse 5. Acts 15 verse 5. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying, so these are people who have professed that they are followers of Jesus Christ. They believe in Jesus Christ. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believe rose up saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And these were Christians uh, in Jerusalem. But they are not the leaders. 
They are not the leaders. They are just a segment. A segment. That's why they sect means a part. So these are the people who, though they profess to be followers and believers of Jesus Christ, but they are not willing to let go of the tradition. And they want to impose this on others. Verse 24, Acts 15. Since we have heard that some who went out from us, went out from us, we, we are the Christians in Jerusalem, but there were some Christians from Jerusalem who were, have been with us, they went out from us, have troubled you with words, unsettling your souls. And what did they say? You must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. So the leaders in Jerusalem said, we are aware from our community of faith in Jerusalem. Some people have left us and gone up to Antioch and other places, troubling you, telling you that you must be circumcised and you must keep the law. And I want to say, as the leader of the Jerusalem church, we did not give such commandments. So if you were Paul and Barnabas and you listen to this, uh, wow, this is not a wasted trip. This trip really confirmed and affirmed that we have been called by God, used by God, and the message is that we have been preaching is the right message, the gospel. Grace, okay? By grace, you have been saved. So, verse... Let me read the last part of verse 4. Our, they, they came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. To whom? That means to these Judaizers, to these false brethren. We did not yield submission even for an hour. Simply it means it. We did not even give them airtime. We got no time for these Judaizers. You give them an hour, they, they will want to brainwash you. No, we got no time. We did not even uh, submit to them for even an hour. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So, he is writing to the people in Galatia, the churches in Galatia. We did not even entertain the Judaizers. Why? So that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Stick with the truth and not not with this Judaizers. You know, grace uh, is not negotiable. Truth is not negotiable. You, you cannot compromise for the sake of unity. Okay, la, we, are, we, are, we are brethren and we are Jews or whatever. So, so, okay, la, okay, la, okay. La. We believe you're okay. We circumcise. No, truth is not negotiable. Neither is grace. So, we have uh, looked at a uh, private consultation which he did with uh, leaders of some reputation. We looked at uh, a practical illustration in the person of Titus. And now we look at a personal confrontation. A personal confirmation, not confrontation. A personal confirmation. And with this we should end, verse 6 to 10. But... From those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. But from those who seem to be something, I don't know why Paul did not use words like, you know, these were leaders, these were apostles, but he used words like, of some reputation, you know, who seem to be something, seem to be somebody, but he said, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. Me, whoever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. Those who seem to be something added nothing to me. Those who seem to be something, who are these? These were the people with reputation. These are the people who were the established leaders, apostles or whoever. They added nothing to me. But the lesson here is, you and I should be like Paul. We must not be intimidated by any man. Doesn't matter if, you know, they, they got ropes, uh, got high head, uh, big name, bishop, archbishop, 
deacon, chief deacon, whatever. But of course, we give honour to the man whom God has appointed. But when I say do not be intimidated is because they speak with a louder voice. They stand on a higher platform. Whatever they say is gospel. No. You ought to check what they say. Even whatever I teach you, go back and check. If it is of the word of God, take it. If it is not, throw it away. But don't be intimidated. Thou shalt be circumcised. Oh, yes, sir. You know, Thou shalt keep the feast. Yes, sir. So, Paul is saying, from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, whoever they are, it makes no difference to me. God shows no favoritism, personal favoritism to anyone. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. That means their message and my message is the same. They didn't come and add. Peter, James and John did not come and tell, hey Paul, you are missing something, you must add this. Must add the law. Must add. No, they added nothing to him. So they are on par in terms of the message. So it is the same gospel. <clears throat> Verse 7, But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised, who are the uncircumcised? The Gentiles. Okay? The Gentiles are the uncircumcised. The circumcised are the Jews. So if you read, you must know who they are. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised, meaning the Gentiles, had been committed to me, of course, Paul had been sent even in Acts chapter 9 that he was to be the apostle to the Gentiles. So when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter. So Peter was to be the apostles to the Jews, circumcised. Paul was the apostle to the uncircumcised, the Gentiles. For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised, God who worked effectively in Peter for the evangelism to the Jews, also worked effectively in me, in Paul, toward the Gentiles. So what is the lesson here? Peter you have your ministry to the Jews. I, Paul, have ministry to the Gentiles. Now, so does it mean, does it mean that uh, Paul uh, got no interest in the salvation of the Jews? No, Jew, no, I'm not interested in you. I only want to preach to the Gentiles. And Peter comes along and says, you what, Gentile, I'm not interested in you. I only want to preach to the Jews. Is that what it is? No. In fact, Peter, when he first went to evangelize, he was first sent to a Gentile. You know that? In Acts chapter 10, when Peter was first sent, he, he was sent, you know, he was up on the roof praying, and then after that, the, he saw this so called like canvas coming down, clean animals, unclean animals, and so on. And God taught him. Jesus taught him, hey, don't call. Because huh? he, he wouldn't eat the unclean animals. Huh? He said, don't call unclean what I made clean. And the first person God sent him out was to Cornelius, right? A centurion. And Cornelius was a Gentile. Peter went you know, to a Gentile and he, he started his ministry there. And then later he went to the Jews. Okay, so we look at uh, Paul. What about Paul? Did, 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 he, did he start with Gentiles? No, he started with Jews. And even if you read Acts 9, no, Romans chapter 9, verse 1, 2, and 3, you have Romans 9. His heart has always been for the Jews. He would witness to the Jews. Romans 9. So, you read Romans 9, Romans 10, Romans 11, chapter 1, uh, no, verse 1, verse 1, verse 1, you'll find that his heart was for the Jews. I tell the truth in Christ, Paul wrote in Romans. I am not lying, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Spirit. Verse 2, that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. 
For I could wish that I myself were a curse, devoted to destruction, that's what it means, were a curse from Christ for my brethren. Who are my brethren? He's a Jew, my fellow Jews, my countrymen, according to the flesh. He also had desire for the Jews to be saved. One chapter later, Romans 10, verse, eight, verse 1. Can you? Romans 10, verse 1. He also had expressed the same thing. Brethren, Jews, right? My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Chapter 11, Romans 11, verse 1. I say then, has God cast away His people? Who are His people? The Jews. Has God cast away His people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. If you read all the way Romans 11 to chapter 11 verse 26, His desire is one day all Israel shall be saved. So what I'm saying is, Peter also witness to the Gentile, not just the Jews. Paul witness also to the Jews, not just the Gentile, but predominantly, most of the time, mainly occupied with, for Peter is Jews, for Paul is the Gentiles. So you and I, while we may have a predominant ministry, don't discriminate. In the eyes of God, they are all, they are all, people that Christ died for. So we should witness to them as well. But back to Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. And when James, and this James is the half-brother of Jesus, who was the first leader of the church in Jerusalem, and when James, Cephas, Cephas is another name for Peter. This is, the, I believe, the Aramic name of, of Peter. Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars. Somehow, I don't know why he, he did not call them pillars. He just said, seemed to be, got some little uh, reputation. Okay, anyway. Who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me. That means they noticed and they saw and they accepted the grace that God had given to Paul. They gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. So, when they came together and realized, Paul and Barnabas, you all preach the same gospel. God has given us different ministry. We are to the Jews, you are to the Gentiles. Fine, let's shake hands. And this is the hand, right hand of fellowship. Right hand of fellowship talks about uh, acceptance, talks about agreement, yeah? and then in, in partnership. And, and we are, you know, so were they, even in Jerusalem. So, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. But it, if it is the left hand of fellowship, they would have kicked them out from Jerusalem, right? Go home. And what did they say? That we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. And who are the circumcised? The Jews. Okay? That we, Paul and Barnabas, should go to the Gentiles and they, Peter and his team, they shall go to the Jews. Verse 10. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing, which I also was eager to do. So the only thing they, they told uh, Paul and Barnabas is, don't forget the poor. Who are these poor? As I mentioned earlier, these are the Christians in Judea who were suffering because of the famine. So go, go, go and minister to the Gentiles, but don't forget the poor in, in Judea. So Paul went around, even as a minister, he encouraged them, he taught them, he discipled them, but he also enlisted their financial help so that he can bring the financial help to Jerusalem for the benefit of these uh, Christians in Judea. And Paul said, yes, it is something that agrees with me 
And this is something that I'm eager to do. So, so Father, we just want to thank you for your presence here. Thank you, Lord, even for your word um, that has brought uh, life even to us. Life in, in, in terms of recognizing your grace and, and that you, in your grace and in your mercy, have called us into your marvelous light. And, and I pray, Lord, that we shall be like Paul, that the truth and grace shall not be compromised. It, it, it is not negotiable. And I pray that we, we will continue to press on uh, uh, according to your word and your truth and to stand upon that which Jesus, through his word, had taught us. So we thank you once again. We pray, Lord, that you uh, grant to us a good rest and, and restore us and... and, and we look forward to another occasion where we can gather to study your word again. In Jesus' name, Amen.